everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be with you, us here tonight. Uh, Mayor Mike Fournier, I'm going to call to order the February 24th, 2020 Royal Oak City Commission meeting to order. We're going to begin with an invocation given by Commissioner Lavasser, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that you stand if you can. Recognizing that we are in the last week of February and that the calendar will soon turn to March, and despite some inclement weather still to be expected, we could say we are in the autumn of the winter. <laughs> Spring will soon be here with warmer weather, trees budding, flowers blooming, and robins making our backyards their stomping grounds once again. Let us look forward to the changing of the season. Let the sun start to warm our homes and bodies. And let all that call Royal Oak their home enjoy hope and optimism that likewise warm their hearts. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right. First thing we're going to kick off with is the Complete Count 2020 Census Committee update. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Bernadette Beach, and I've been working with the uh, Royal Oak Complete Count Committee for the last year. The committee has been working on getting the word out about the 2020 Census. We have one chance every 10 years to get the count right. Uh, what's at stake for Royal Oak? The census determines how much federal funding, we're talking billions of dollars, and political representation in Congress. Um, our census count determines fundings for public safety, including police and fire, health care, education and infrastructure, and impacts other essential services. The 20 cents, 2010 response rate for Royal Oak was 82%, and I know that Royal Oak can do better than that. In mid-March, every home will receive an invitation to participate in the 2020 census. You will have three options for responding, online, by phone, and by mail. The goal is counting everyone once, only once, in the right place. 2020 is the first time for online registration. So people, um, once they receive their notice, they can go online immediately and they will uh, be able to register their census. Those who do not have access to online registration uh, can either call in once they get the notice or wait to receive a paper census, which will arrive sometime after they receive the notice. Language support. The U.S. Census Bureau provides translated web pages and guides in 59 non-English languages, including American Sign Language, as well as guides in Braille and large print. The committee has been reaching out in many ways to educate citizens on the importance of an accurate census, including schools, senior centers, social media, and community events. Committee members are available to conduct presentations if they're still needed by any organizations. There are also banners located in the library and in the farmer's market. Data shows there are certain groups that have consistently been undercounted in past censuses and are therefore classified as hard to count. We must work to ensure that the following are aware that the 2020 census is coming and that no one is left uncounted. These hard to count groups include children under five, senior citizens, minorities, and immigrants. These hard to count groups, um, wait, it is important to know that everyone living in your household as of April 1st, 2020, must be counted for the, citizen, for the census. You may know seniors who need assistance. Um, anyone with children must include them on the census. If you have college students living um, away from home, they will be counted at their university address. 
We need your help spreading the word that responding to the census is convenient, confidential, and critical to our future. This Saturday, the committee will be distributing yard signs and maps at the library at 10 a.m. Um, that will cover the city, reminding people to complete the census. And we'd appreciate any help we can get in doing this. The committee is grateful for the foresight and support of the city commission and the administrative staff of the city manager's office in this initiative. It is now up to the citizens of Royal Oak to respond. Thank you, Ms. Beach. Does anyone mm -hmm. have any questions for Ms. Beach? I just want to thank you and the rest of the committee for the work that you're doing. Uh, basically coming out of the gate without a solid framework. I mean, this is something really new we're doing, so all of you are kind of going down uh, uncharted territory here, and we're very grateful for what you're doing, and what you do counts and really matters, and, um, you know, we're excited to see the results and make sure that, you know, Royal Oak, um, you know, is represented in the census accurately so we can make sure that we um, receive our due. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. All right, this brings us to item number five, public comment. So just a few rules about public comment before we commence. Uh, the City Commission values and relies on citizen input in order to make informed decisions. Now is the time set aside to address the City Commission on any city-related issue, whether or not it's on the agenda here tonight. I ask that comments be directed to the Commission as a whole and not to individual commissioners. In addition to public comment, there will be two public hearings at tonight's meeting. If you're here to comment on City Ramen, or Hishu Craft Beer Bar requests for approval uh, for their plans of operation. Uh, you may wait until those public hearings are opened and the same rules of public comment apply, uh, and you can do so at that time. If you're here to speak about any other topic tonight, uh, please wait until recognized by me, the mayor. Uh, come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Um, and because we want to hear from anyone who wishes to speak tonight, comments are limited to three minutes, and there's a timer at the podium to help you keep track of your time. If you don't wish to speak tonight, that's all right. Many people reach out to us via email, telephone, uh, grocery store, um, you name it, and uh, express their, um, their thoughts, concerns, and ideas. Uh, please note the City Commission typically doesn't respond directly to questions during public comment. However, we're taking notes, and when uh, the topic comes up on the agenda, we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, and if it's not on the agenda tonight, your question, our City Manager, uh, Mr. Gillum here, uh, is also taking notes and follows up on matters uh, accordingly. So with that, who's first? Mr. Nahab. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, honorable members of the City Commission, good evening. My name is Ed Nahat. I live at 1409 Lloyd in Royal Oak. I think it's my seventh address in Royal Oak over my lifetime, and I love it here. I'm here to celebrate uh, an anniversary we have an item on the consent agenda that I want to uh, thank you for. This is the 20th year that we'll be presenting Shakespeare in the Park in Royal Oak. It's a professional outdoor Shakespeare festival, one of a kind in the state of Michigan, and we all ought to be proud of it. We started it in the summer of 2001, and I came before you after it was all over, full of joy, full of happiness, and you were too. It was a wonderful evening. And it was September 10th, 2001. The next day, after all the horror that we saw in New York, we resolved to go on, and we did. For 19 years now, we presented Shakespeare in the Park in Royal Oak, a professional festival that not only presents high quality professional actors, designers, directors who are our residents and our nearby communities' residents, but we also educate our students and our youth right here in Royal Oak, too. We have two youth programs, Kids Act, which teaches children from grades one to six Shakespeare's soliloquies and sword fights, and they love that. And we also teach element, or junior high and high school students how to put on an actual full Shakespeare play that they act, they direct, they stage manage, and they design themselves. That's all here in your park in the summertime. It's fantastic, and I wanna thank you for considering our event on the consent agenda tonight. It means a lot to all of the artists that Royal Oak is a special place for artists to live and to grow. So thanks for that. I also want to use my last minute to tell you about something else, something special that our theater company is presenting. 
that will involve you. I'm here to tell you about uh, a date to be determined, but a very special play that our theater is going to put on about the history of Royal Oak, and it features amazing characters like Lewis Cass, the man who named city of Royal Oak, and Orson Starr, the man who first made bells here in Royal Oak, and even Elizabeth Briggs, our first librarian. These characters will come to life in celebrating the new city hall. So our theater company thanks you for the opportunity for us to live and grow here in Royal Oak. And we love its history, and we're here to share it with you. Thank you very much. I hope you have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Nahan. And I will just say I did have a small preview uh, a few months ago of Mr. Cass, and I'm very excited. I mean, you do an excellent job with your productions, and uh, the small preview you had uh, uh, helping out um, with the second grade or uh, in kindergarten to, to second grade classes uh, with an outdoor um, uh, presentation when we did the mural uh, launch, that was, uh, that was pretty great. And uh, it had me laughing and engaged, and I thought that I had stepped back in time. The quality of work was so well. Thank you. Anybody else tonight? Mr. Harrison. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, Bill Harrison, 2729 Trafford in Royal Oak. A couple of items. The first item, the Veterans Memorial. You know, the intent of dedicating the Veterans Memorial property was to provide a permanent location for the Veterans Memorial. I was on the DDA at the time the property was dedicated as a result of a public vote. We were assured that it would require a public vote in order to relocate the memorial again. The, the City Commission and the DDA have both betrayed that trust by voting to move the monument without the vote of the people. This issue should again be placed on the ballot for a vote of the people. Now, regarding the uh, city manager interviews, just a comment, sometimes the best man for the job is a woman. But what, what uh, got me started here was the question regarding global warming and sustainability was a thinly veiled attempt to see which candidates were or are the most liberal. In other words, more amenable to the socialist majority on the commission. You know, global warming is nothing more than a political hoax. I'm old enough to remember when we were told that there was an impending ice age. All things in nature tend towards stability. Water seeking its own level is the most notable example. You know, you're aware that I've been in the architect and engineering business for over 55 years. You may not know that, uh, that it's our uh, primary client mix uh, is in the industrial market. We've done manufacturing facilities all over the country and in the world. Uh, two areas of my expertise are air pollution control and thermal storage. Two of my systems and equipment designs have been patented by IBM and Navistar, the truck people. The Navistar system abated over 300 tons of VOCs, volatile organic uh, compounds, the solvents that are in paint per year and got them out of a federal uh, lawsuit. Also, this system cost only 10% of the conventional automotive paint system, VOC emissions control, and the energy required to operate the system was proportionally re reduced. The IBM system has also been licensed uh, to a semiconductor manufacturer's consortium located in Albany, New York, so it lives on. I've designed several million gallons of chilled water storage systems. These systems offset the power generation load to off-peak hours, thus reducing the required power plant capacity. In other words, smaller power plants. I'm also published in the American Society of Heating, Ref Heating Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, known as ASHRAE, in their uh, 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 journal on the subject. Mr. Harrison, I do need you to finish your last thoughts. Working sir. there. So. I know something about environmental protection and energy conservation, and it pains me to hear people assert opinions on a subject that is nothing more than a political hoax. It's what the communists call being a useful idiot. Thank you, Mr. I would, Harrison. One last comment, please. Indulge me. I'll grant me. you that privilege. 
Thank despite you. the insult. Well, you know that's how it is. You know me. I, I would, I would much rather have heard the applicants tell us what their community bond rating is, and how they manage the legacy cost and the legacy debt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. All right, who's next? Mr. Karlowski, come on down. Hello, Rick Karlowski, 419 Virginia, uh, across the street from the OK Corral. Uh, I'm here today to discuss uh, the incident, isolated as it may or may not have been, uh, that we had last Saturday. Um, got to meet a lot of new, new people on, from the police department. But uh, in reviewing uh, what I was going to say here tonight is, is it's not just short-term rentals that I think we need to take a look at. It's our rental policy in general. For example, right now, we require a license, in theory, to rent your house in the city. However, there is absolutely no teeth to that, to that uh, statute. There's no fine if you don't. If I was renting my house, I would certainly never buy, get a license and then have uh, uh, code folks crawl around it once a year or once every two years. I just go and rent it. If you, if you happen to find out I'm renting it, you send me a letter and I buy a license. Big whoop. There's no, uh, there's no particular guidelines as to how a license is revoked. I mean, how many police calls is there before we take action? How many code enforcement letters do we have to send out before we say you're done? There's nothing in the statute at all for this. Nobody should have to put up with a bad renter, long-term or short-term. And as far as short-term goes, I mean, I think we can all agree that a short-term rental has, uh, has more of an opportunity for malfeasance than a long-term one. There's no skin in the game. It's not his residence. He doesn't have a big security deposit. He's not going to, I mean, uh, a short-term renter can disappear into the night as these apparently did without having to worry about anything. You're not going to go back for your furniture or anything else. Now, if you look around the country, uh, Charleston, South Carolina has a great deal, has a very uh, large, uh, regulatory thing, especially on short-term rentals, they require the landlord to actually live on premise, much like you would have an office if you're renting a motel, which in essence is what these short-term rentals are. They are a motel in, my neighbor, in the neighborhoods. Now, if we don't want to go that far, at the very least, let's outlaw one-night rentals. We can tell all the uh, listing agencies that these are no longer allowed in Royal Oak, and maybe we won't have that. But I think we need to do something to get some teeth into our rental ordinances before this isolated incidence becomes a bit more commonplace. As much as I like talking to the news media, I would prefer not to. I, and, and, and I just want to say one thing that uh, the Royal Oak Cops uh, came very quickly, uh, did, were very professional. I mean, my, my cell phone was off by the time I got it uh, operational. Other people have called in and they had already cordoned off the area. And, and, uh, and taking care of business, and, and there was there was no no issue about anybody getting uh, out of hand, and everything went out fairly smoothly after that. But we definitely need to take a look at these short-term rentals because I think they're going to be an issue if we don't. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Krawski. I'd also ask too. You should probably petition the state as well. I know they're looking at legislation right now. Uh, we had a conversation here a while back about the state preempting us from banning the banning of short-term rentals. So if you can communicate that as well to um, our state rep and to the um, controlled legislature, that'd be great too. Thank you. Um, who's next? All right. Oh, one in the back. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm Michael Willard, 3003 Maplewood. And I would like to discuss a few issues with the city in regards to rental housing laws. Uh, purchasing infrastructure and utilities. Uh, the recent incident involving the shooting uh, at the Airbnb house a few blocks away from the police department is of great concern. The city of Royal Oak and commission needs to establish an ordinance for any Airbnb or similar service house with an active landlord uh, supervision or any accountability on the services behalf without an active landlord that is. Airbnbs, where entire homes are rented, may need to be treated like rental homes and aligned with city ordinances, as well as fee structure. I agree with the previous commenter. Um, I had an inst instance of, you know, ruthless renters across the street from me, where 
there was a big crystal meth operation going on and had to be busted up by the Oakland County Sheriff's. And to get them out, it took years to get them out. And the landlord who was responsible for it did absolutely nothing. I still deal with them to this day. And the, 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 I guess the consequence for the landlord was minimal. Um, that's one of the issues I want to talk about. Another issue I want to talk about really quick is a recent roads report. It's a polling, setting, settling for a passer rating of five instead of six, as agreed upon when the road millage was passed, is acceptable. Five is considered fair, which is just slightly above four, which is rated a rating of four. It is believed that most residents here want good, not fair, and not poor. Asking for additional funding by requesting an extension of the current road millage is not a viable option. The City of Royal Oak and City Commission need to come up with a legitimate solution to the road infrastructure problem. But placing temporary hot and cold patch on cr crumbling roads is not an answer. A bigger discussion of how to appropriately fix the roads needs to be had with the city and its contractors. This leads to the question, if Royal Oak does not have any money for roads, how can the city approve spending for uh, $152,000 on 40 computers, which is $3,800 per computer? Per computer for IT versus the Royal Oak Library purchasing 30 computers for $16,000, which is $533 per computer. Working in the tech world, $3,800 per computer appears a bit steep. This spend by the IT department is highly questionable. The final topic I would like to touch on is the South Oakland Water Association report, where it was stated as a whole the association is using less water, but is being charged more by the Great Lakes Water Authority. This equates to members of the South Oakland Water Association, including Royal Oak residents, water bills increasing with some potential having lead in the water. Something does not make sense here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Billard. Anybody else wish to speak tonight at public comment? Going once, going twice. All right, we're going to close public comment. There'll still be an opportunity to speak at the public hearings, as long as your comments are germane to the topic of the public hearing. So we're going to bring the discussion to this side of the table. And we will move on to our next agenda item, which is the approval of the agenda. We have an agenda in front of us. Commissioner Douglas makes a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah, that, yeah. that one. Yeah, okay. that one. Okay, <laughs> is there a second? A second by Commissioner Perush. Uh, any discussion? Oh, wait. It's down below. Oh. This is just the minutes right. that I have. Yeah. No discussion? Okay. With none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. We have an agenda. This brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull anything off for further discussion off the consent agenda? Is anyone willing to make a motion for the consent agenda? I will. Commissioner Perush with the motion. Commissioner Dubuck with the second. Um, the consent agenda now consists of City Commission Special Meeting Strategic Planning Work Session Minutes, January 25th, City Commission Special Meeting Marijuana Work Session Minutes, February 5th, City Commission Meeting Minutes, February 10th, Confirmation of Mayoral Appointment, Library Board of Trustees, Claims February 14th and 25th, 2020, Approval of Purchase Orders, Proclamation Designating March 2020 as 20th Anniversary of Ethnic Heritage Cultural Month, Approval of Special Event Permits, Shakespeare in the Park, 2020, uh, 2020 public right-of-way ordinance, second reading, and receive and file the following non-action items, local and major roads improvement program status report, historic district study committee annual report, January 2020 Southeastern Oakland County Resource <coughs> Recovery Authority <coughs> quarterly reports, and the Southeastern Oakland County Water Authority uh, quarter, or SACWA quarterly reports. Any discussion? All right, with that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. Consent is approved. This brings us to item number eight on tonight's agenda, which is the Michigan Liquor Control Commission license establishments. Um, item A, which is a public hearing on City Ramen, 321 South Main Street, request for approval of new plan of operation. Chief O'Donohue. Uh, Mayor, City Commission. The Royal Oak Police Department has received a request from Oshi Solutions LLC to transfer ownership and locations of a Class C an SDM liquor license. Uh, this transfer is from Rochester Hills. Uh, the applicants are currently doing business as City Ramen. Oshi Solutions is owned by Scott Perdone and Tracy Delzil. 
Uh, the applicants have purchased a license for $80,000. The applicants have already spent $750,000 on furniture, fixtures, equipment, and inventory for ramen, for city ramen. I'll skip over the financials. Uh, it's all included, but they are already up and running. Um, both uh, Mr. Perdone and, or Perdone and Mr. Delzel are uh, have backgrounds in IT and have no prior experience with LCC establishments. The applicants have hired William Cursos uh, as general manager. He has 30 years of general business experience, five in the food industry. He has employed as a manager for Lafayette Coney Island in Detroit for the last four years, which has an LCC license. Uh, he will be responsible for all day-to-day -day operations. Uh, City Ramen operates as a casual restaurant specializing in specializing in five ramen noodle dishes uh, and a small menu with four appetizers uh, with, and will plan, tend to have a very limited alcohol menu. Hours of operation are 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Wednesday through Monday and they'll be closed on Tuesday. They anticipate the food alcohol ratio to be 83 percent food, 17 percent alcohol. Uh, they're requesting to serve beer, wine, and sake. Uh, they have 2,100 square feet with about uh, 1,100 uh, usable square feet for customers. Total interior seating is currently 43 uh, for 43 patrons, including 12 at the bar. Um, uh, the applicants are not requesting either a entertainment permit or dance permit. There is an SDM license, license as part of this purchase agreement. They have no plans right now to sell off-site alcohol, but they uh, plan on retaining the SDM license. Uh, um, the LCC has uh, no no issues with the application. Um, our our uh, based on our findings, we have uh, no no objections to this request. We think they're good operators. If approved, the applicants will have to comply with all planning, zoning, and building requirements and restrictions. Any questions for the chief? Are the petitioners here tonight? Do you want to add anything to the report or? Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. You don't have to. We're happy to be in Oh, come up to the podium. You got, I say you could plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> it happens very rarely that people talk themselves out of a, out of a um, recommendation, but I don't see that happening tonight. Sure. So, <laughs> I'm Scott Purden from Birmingham. I do it 960 Lakeside. Okay, <laughs> but we're, we're happy to be in Royal Oak. We're excited uh, for this new uh, um, Americanized ramen experience. We've gotten a lot of great feedback and we're hoping to be here for the next, uh, I think, 15 years of our lease. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, any questions? Uh, Commissioner Douglas. Yes, uh, do you plan to open for lunch? We, we would like to do that. Uh, we kind of need to get our, our, our feet wet, if, if you will. Um, we just want to make sure that we're serving uh, authentic, um, repeatable uh, dish before we open up. Lunch is a whole new animal. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm going to open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak at tonight's public hearing related to City Ramen? Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing and bring the meeting back up to this side of the table. Commissioner Dubuck. Uh, Mayor, with no objection from the police department and a uh, operator that's bringing a you know, cool concept to the city. Yeah, I'll move for approval. All right, motion by Commissioner Dubuck, second by Commissioner Macy. Any discussion? Just add, you know, my daughter is a, uh, my, my eldest is a big ramen fan. And so, you know, this will be nice to have a beer while I get to listen about her <laughs> trials and tribulations as a middle schooler <laughs> while enjoying ramen with her. So I appreciate this, this um, application. <laughs> All right. I will uh, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations. Good luck. All right. This brings us to 8B, which is our second public hearing on Hisho Craft Beer. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It seems like I should be able to pronounce it very easily, but you never know. Um, and request for approval of a new plan of operation. Uh, Chief O'Donoghue. Uh, yes, Mayor, City Commission, uh, the Police Department has received a request from Hishu Craft Beer Bar Royal Oak LLC to transfer the ownership and location of an escrowed Class C 550 resort license with, with uh, also with an SDM. 
Uh, this license is from Petoskey. The applicants will be doing business as Hishu Sushi and Craft Beer Bar. Hishu Craft Beer Bar L Royal Oak LLC is a foreign limited liability company registered in the state of Delaware and licensed to transact bu business in Michigan. Uh, Hishu Craft Beer Bar Royal Oak LLC is owned by Hishu Restaurant Company LLC, a limited liability company registered in the state of Delaware with the home office in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hishu Restaurant Company LLC is a franchise business with hundreds of locations owned by franchisees throughout the United States. Uh, Hishu Craft Beer Royal Oak LLC is a corporate-owned location managed by uh, Matthew Wilkin, who is also the CFO of Hishu Craft or Hishu Restaurant Company LLC and resides in North Carolina. The applicants have purchased a liquor license for seventy-five thousand dollars. The applicants intend to spend two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars on furniture, fixtures, and equipment and inventory. The applicants will fully fund the project through revenue generated from other Hishu restaurant operations. The applicants will lease the building from Myers under a percentage of sales model, which is 25% of food and alcohol sales. I'm sorry, yeah, food and alcohol business sales. Uh, Hishu is a franchise, operates a sushi bar, uh, offering uh, fresh, high-quality sushi and other Asian-themed entrees. Um, they currently have over 1,700 locations throughout the United States. Of those locations, only two are co corporate owned and none are uh, have a liquor license. Um, however, cor the cor other the corporate location is in Brighton, Michigan, and they are also seeking uh, MLCC license for that location as well. Um, these would be their first corporate owned restaurants with the liquor license. The applicants have, uh, have employed Jeff Geechee as a general manager. Uh, Mr. Geechee has experience in management and consulting in the hospitality and restaurant business for the past 12 years, and he'll be responsible for day-to-day -day operations. If approved, they'll operate as a dine-in and carry-out sushi restaurant inside the Meyer store on Coolidge. Uh, the requested hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday and 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Um, applicants expect the food alcohol ratio to be 85% food, 15% alcohol. Um, the applicants are requesting to serve a very limited alcohol menu of craft beer, wine, and sake, along with fresh squeezed juices, smoothies, soft drinks, coffee, and tea. Um, they will have approximately 456 usable square feet. Total proposed interior will have seating for 40 patrons, including 20 at the sushi bar. Uh, overall capacity will be set by the police department. The applicants are not requesting either an entertainment or dance permit. The applicants have purchased an SDM license as part of the purchase agreement, uh, and they plan to retain that license to, uh, in the future to sell off-premise sales for sealed growlers of craft beer. Uh, there's some question about um, whether or not this license, because <coughs> it's a 550 license, is actually eligible for transfer. That's being investigated by the MLCC uh, and uh, we d haven't had uh, any kind of determination from them on whether or not this license, because it's a resort license, uh, can move to a location this small. Um, uh, the Hishu brand is currently operated in multiple locations throughout the United States, um, although this is a little bit of an unusual uh, uh, proposal. Uh, the police department has no objections to this request. If approved, the applicants will have to comply with all planning, zoning, building uh, requirements and restrictions. And I believe if it's, if it's approved, it, I think uh, our city manager has made sure it's uh, contingent upon them getting full MLCC approval. Some questions for the chief. Commissioner Douglas. So this is within Myers? I mean, is it like just one of the stores like <coughs> they have along their south side there? Yes. Yes. Um, so any... Um, uh, Planning or, or zoning changes would just be changes to the interior of the Myers store. Yes, but sometimes when the rules are different, if you were to have like a Starbucks as opposed to an, a liquor licensed establishment, I don't, I'm not really familiar with them, so we just cover ourselves. You have to go through all the hoops for planning and building. Sure. The variance for zoning or whatever. So for parking. Okay. Good. Thank you, Mr. Pruge. I can't tell from the site plan that's attached to this request. It, is there going to be an exterior um, entrance to the outside, or you're going to have to actually go into Meyer in order to get into the restaurant? I believe you'll have to go into Myers to get into the restaurant. Okay. 
Thank you. Is the petitioner here tonight? All right. Tell us a little bit more and, and maybe help it for. We'll see who's pronouncing it right or wrong. Is it his shoe or his show? He, he show. <laughs> he show. So we're both wrong. None of us. <laughs> Good. We're on the same page, right. Corey. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, Stephen Grobel, uh, the attorney for He Show Sushi and Craft Beer Bar. I also happen to be a resident of Royal Oak. Uh, I have brought three representatives of uh, He Show with me tonight. Uh, Patrick Knapp, who is the senior director of non traditional strategy, uh, John Galashevsky, who there's John the Director of Non-Traditional Operations, and Jeff Gesh, who is the managing partner. Uh, uh, the Chief sort of covered it uh, as I look at my notes here. Um, we are going to be inside Meyer, yes, along sort of that, that south wall. Uh, you do have to go into the store to, to get to the restaurant. There is no exterior door. You can't come in from the parking lot. Um, the one thing I did want to reference, the Chief mentioned the resort license. Uh, resort license a little different in that it's transferable anywhere in the state as opposed to uh, most Class C licenses that are only transferable within the county. Uh, resort licenses come with some, some conditions, some restrictions that have to be met. Uh, one of them being uh, there is a seating capacity restriction of uh, 100 seats. Um, Lieutenant Spencer, who conducted the investigation, and I uh, talked through that. Um, we're confident that the MLCC will approve that. Um, the MLCC has been interpreting that requirement as uh, meeting uh, 100 seats through the business day. In other words, if I had, uh, like in this case, 40 seats, as long as I turn those over two and a half times during the business day, I would meet my 100 receipt requirement. It does not require, you know, having an actual 100 seats for, you know, at a time. So. Um, we have uh, uh, done several of these types of resort licenses uh, in the past uh, and successfully, uh, so we're confident that that will, uh, will happen again. But obviously, uh, if the MLCC does not approve this transfer, uh, then, <laughs> then uh, we're, we're not moving into that space. Uh, so um, again, uh, relatively, um, it's not a very extensive alcohol menu. It's uh, six craft beers on tap. It's uh, eight wines, which includes some sake on tap. Uh, there's no spirits being served. There's no, you know, there's no gin and tonics or rum and cokes. Um, it's essentially a beer and wine to go with your sake. Again, it's a relatively small place. The, uh, the seating area is like about 450 square feet. It's uh, 40 seats, sort of 20 at the, at the sushi bar, and then there's some, some tables. So. Um, uh, this is a, as the chief mentioned, one of the two corporate stores. This is uh, sort of new for Hisho. Uh, they have, they are a franchisor of sushi, sushi bars. They have 1,700 plus across the country. Uh, so they're very experienced in running these. They are stepping out and going to operate them now themselves as a company store as opposed to a franchisee-owned store. So this is Hisho, uh, you know, through and through, top to bottom here. So uh, as the chief mentioned, uh, there's the first two company-owned stores. There's one in Brighton. Uh, there's also a MLCC application for that pending also. So we are currently pending with MLCC. In fact, I have a, a meeting with the MLCC investigator tomorrow um, as that progresses. So. Uh, we're hopeful that we will have that uh, shortly, uh, but we do will need a little time, assuming that uh, the, the commission here approves. Uh, we've got a little build-out time uh, before we get started. Sure. Will you guys be doing any sort of signage on the outside of Myers, just out of curiosity, so people, okay. So it's not just like a surprise when you come in. No, actually, and if you've been to the Royal Oak Meyer on Coolidge, there used to be a Starbucks sign. Mm -hmm. We're actually taking that same exact space on the outside. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs. Because it's an obvious question and you said sushi to go, I'm assuming, although correct me if I'm wrong, that you don't have to be sitting down to drink sake and beer. You do? So I can't do my grocery shopping and eat and drink? <laughs> oh, Rats. Yeah, that's <laughs> Good thought, though. Yeah, I like that. Nice try. I'm voting no. <laughs> we'd, we'd love to be able to figure that out, but the way that the, the, we, the two liquor licenses, so Meyer has a license for their store. Mm -hmm. Our space actually gets removed oh, from okay. their liquor license so that we can have our liquor license. So ours is on-site. 
theirs is off-site. So you can't take our product into the rest of the right. grocery There's store. no strolling sake, unfortunately. <laughs> all, all, uh, we're a, as a Class C on-premise, all the alcohol cannot leave uh, the premise. So the MLC is very strict about defining what the licensed premise okay. is and where the alcohol has to stay, unfortunately. I had to ask the obvious. No, question. I appreciate <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Someone to do your shopping for you while you sit in, in our restaurant. Wow, well, that's, well, that's, nice. that's a good idea. You could, do, you could do the click list and then just sit back or the shipped, you know, with Meyer and hang out. Um, Commissioner Macy. Um, I also was sort of curious about the location. Is there? Are you going to do catering as well? Is that part of the business model, or is it all sit down? It just Seems odd yeah. to be inside of. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually do catering. So um, the one kind of weird part about this as well, he shows already in this grocery store, in this mire. So if you walk by and happen to see the sushi, that's actually one of our franchisees today making that. Um, we do have party platters. Uh, these two gentlemen over the next month are actually putting together what that catering program looks like um, because our menu is a little bit more than just sushi. We also have Asian chicken wings. We have uh, chicken teriyaki bao buns, different types of gyoza, egg rolls, so bento boxes. So we're actually putting together a catering program for all of that product as well. Interesting. <clears throat> all right, any other questions for the petitioners? Commissioner Perush? Is your Brighton location going to be inside another facility like this one is? Is yeah. that the business model that you're kind of following? Yeah, so the Brighton location is actually open today. We're just not serving wine and beer yet because we're waiting to get our license approved. Um, but we are inside of a Meyer there as well. Oh, okay. So these two locations are both with Meyer. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a test for us, which is why we're doing it corporately. We need to prove out a model before we allow franchisees to experience sure. or experiment with it. But the model is kind of right. When you think about your grocery store, where do you spend your most time? Around those four walls of it, right? Where the veggies, the deli, the, the meat. Well, if there's a place where you can sit down, grab a beer, have some wings, some sushi, some sake, while you're shopping, uh, after you're shopping, on your way out, or even take some food to go, right? So it's just trying to uh, add a little excitement inside of the Meyer store as well. So yeah, you don't see us out on the street. We're predominantly in grocery stores. That's where our franchisees are. That's where our business is. So we're still trying to stay a little true to that, just kind of offer up a little bit more for the patrons inside of Amaya right now. Yeah. Keep it relevant. Any other uh, questions? All right, gentlemen, thank you. I'm going to open up the public hearing. Any questions for the chief? Okay. All right, I'm going to open up the public hearing. Same rules apply as public comment. Anyone here wish to speak on Hishu? Okay, I'll close the public hearing and bring the meeting back up to the side of the table. Is there a motion? Commissioner Perush? I'll move approval of this request. Is there a motion by Commissioner Perush? Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Dubuck. Discussion? All right, I'll just add, great concept. Uh, it'll be interesting. And, uh, you know, there might be a little bit more grocery shopping done on my end. <coughs> might, might sign up and volunteer to uh, take that task more often in my household. <laughs> All right, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All right, congratulations, good luck, and we look forward to your opening. Thank you. All right, this brings us to item number nine, which is request to set dates of city commission special meetings and public hearing on the adoption of the fiscal year 2020 and 2021 budget. This could quite possibly be the most exciting item on our agenda tonight. I want to make sure everyone's prepared for it. <laughs> okay, good. Hi, Ms. Rudd. Good How evening, Mayor, City Commission. Um, <coughs> yes, we are asking um, that you uh, get these budget sessions on your calendar. Um, there's not a lot of opportunity. It appears that there are a lot of different committees and um, uh, boards that are, you know, scheduled um, the second, third, fourth week of May. Um, these three dates that have been offered up, uh, Wednesday, May 13th, Wednesday, May 20th, and Thursday, May 28th, are pretty much the only ones available except for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. So, and typically we've kept them um, 
uh, Monday through Thursday, and uh, we're anticipating that the city manager's budget will be delivered to the city commission on May 11th, so of course we want to schedule it after that. And um, we are requesting that the public hearing be June 8th, so we want to make sure we um, have the meetings prior to the uh, to the um, public hearing and have all the discussions so conducted. Regularly scheduled commission meeting for the yes. public hearing? Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Ms. Rudd? Commissioner Levasseur. Uh, for these three dates for the special meetings, how much time are you allotting per meeting? Um, we <coughs> usually go about two and a half to three hours. And we'll get the, the um, draft on the 11th, right? The evening of the 11th. So we'll have a couple days ahead of the 13th if we have any burning questions that pop up. But then we'll also have a week in between the 13th and 20th, yes. you know, to review. So, you know, we kind of go through some of the simpler stuff in the beginning. And then I know we get into some more of the complicated budgetary items. So, um, I mean, the schedule looks, looks good. I mean, we've been able to keep to it in the past. Yes. Any other questions for Ms. Rudd? Unless everyone's playing Candy Crush. I'm sure they're checking their phones to see if there's any uh, conflicts. Mr. Gillum? I do have one comment. Uh, not that I like to disagree with you, Mayor, but there is something exciting about this item tonight. If you take a close look at attachment one, which is the draft of the notice for the public hearing on the mm -hmm. approval of the budget, if you look at the address where that hearing is going to be conducted, it's at the City Commission Chambers, 203 South Troy Street. Oh, oh my wow. So anticipating this will be our first meeting in the new City Hall. Oh, my gosh. You know what? I love to be proven wrong with my sarcasm, and that's amazing. <laughs> wow. No pressure on anybody, right? Get those moving boxes ready. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a pretty big deal. So our, this will probably be our first meetings in City Hall. It should be our very first City Commission meeting in the new City Hall. That's correct. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's exciting. All right. Does anyone, uh, Commissioner Macy? Move approval. You're going to move? Yep. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Macy, second by Commissioner Perush. Any discussion? Just at 6 o'clock is a real challenge when you're coming from <coughs> far away. Yeah. I actually would also not mind if the first one were 6.30 rather than 6, but I mean, I can make it if it's not. Would you like to amend your motion to make it 6.30 for the first one? Um, Not amend, uh, but make a, a proposed amendment? I guess, amendment. I mean, I'm just curious what others say. I can make it at 6. That's my, that's our, my office retreat I, day. I mean, my personal thing, no time's a great time, right? Because if you do it later, 7.30, people are exhausted, you get weak. You know, some of us have, you know, young children we got to attend to, 6 o'clock, yeah, yeah, you got to test the limit on 6.96 sometimes. Um, so, I mean, it's, I think we'll have to go with some sort of consensus here. I'm fine with 630. If people want to move it to 630, I wouldn't want to go later than that, given the material we have to cover. I'm good with 630. Good with 630? With anything. For all of them or that one? For me, just the one. I don't know if. But you'd rather have them all? I'd actually prefer 630, but I can make it happen because I always do, so. Well, then we'll make it six. My gears are grinding right now, but um, that's fine. That's no. no six thirty. Do you want? Do you prefer six thirty? I, I only need six thirty for the first one. The others I'm fine on. Does anyone object to all of them being six thirty? No. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Macy, I would never make any sort of improper requests, but you know, this mayor would entertain if you wanted to make an amendment to change the times to six thirty to make sure we're technically compliant with Robert's rules. I'd like to amend my motion. So okay. that all of the times that proposed in the letter are instead 6.30 rather than 6. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. 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 Okay. I think I had Commissioner Douglas on that one. Okay. Now we're just voting on the amendment to the original going from 6 to 6.30. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All right. This brings us back to the original motion, which has now been amended to have all 6.30 times but the same dates. Any discussion on this motion? All right, with none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> All right, Ms. Rudd, we're good for 630. Thank you. 
Now there's an implied contract <laughs> that we're still going to get done. <laughs> we'll just have to talk fast. All right. That brings us to... I think Ms. Red's still here. Approval of fiscal year 2019-20 budget, second amendments. Ms. Thank Red. you. Oh, yeah, we've got numerous um, <coughs> funds requested to have amended on the second amendment. Um, and then we've got some funds that um, we inform you of. They do not get officially um, adopted, and um, I'll cover those um, a second. Um, first, we have the general fund. There was a request um, of about $132,000 increase in revenues and also offsetting expenditures. Um, that's for the engineering department due to increased uh, right-of-way uh, permits and site plan review um, costs. Again, there's offsetting revenues for those. Um, in addition, there's some smaller um, requests of $10,700 for the uh, emergency generator um, due to the power outage. We have some personnel costs for an electrician, $8,300, and some electrical supplies at $2,000. So um, the general fund, um, overall, total use of fund balance with these um, requests is $2,885,540. In the major road fund, um, requesting to use um, a fund balance of $458,860 for a total use of fund balance anticipated $1,451,120. And um, that increase in expenditures is due to additional operating costs in street maintenance, street traffic control, and street uh, signal services. In the DDA, requesting to increase uh, revenues for the pro half of the <coughs> proceeds from the sale of 700 South Main for about $321,000. In addition, a request uh, for, to increase expenditures for public relations contract of $27,000. Then the Indigent Defense Fund, um, we are requesting to uh, acknowledge the award of the uh, 2020 uh, grant for $120,000 approximately, and then um, the offsetting expenditures there, um, you see the, uh, the line item details um, for the same amount. Then we have the library fund, um, the library facade project um, carryover, they're going to try to get that done this year for approximately 28,000, and then an additional $8,000 for some program uh, supplies for performers, uh, presenters, uh, crafts, and prizes for the summer reading program. And that will come from the use of fund balance for a total use of fund balance for that fund, approximately $139,000. Then of the uh, grants we officially adopt, the last uh, request is for the miscellaneous grants fund and there's numerous small grants um, to acknowledge receipt of and then um, the offsetting expenditures, the West Nile program, um, the bike safety grant and the LEADS uh, program. And then the um, the other funds, I don't know if, did you want me to briefly go over the ones that we do not officially adapt or? Any questions about those ones? It's up to you guys. Um, No questions. Okay. I don't think we need to. Commissioner Douglas? I'll move approval of the uh, adjusted 2019-20 uh, budget. A motion by Commissioner Douglas, second by Commissioner Perouche. Discussion? And with that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Rudd. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> All right. All right, this brings us to item number 11, which is the approval of the January 2020 Traffic Committee resolutions. And without further ado, let's publicly recognize and introduce our new city engineer, Holly Donahue. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Holly Donahue has a long-standing history here in Royal Oak, and we're so proud to have her stepping in 
after Matt's retirement. So thank you, I appreciate uh, that. Welcome and and off we go. And off we go. Okay. Hit the ground running. <laughs> Uh, so here tonight, I'm here to present the January 29th, 2020 recommendations from the Citizens Traffic Committee. Um, we came forward with four different resolutions for your consideration. Um, the first one is uh, to deny a request that we had for some no through traffic signage on Genesee, um, which is just to the west of Campbell Road. Um, we did traffic studies and determined that both the traffic volumes and speeds um, really didn't uh, rise to the level of needing any additional signage there. So we're recommending denying that request. Uh, the next resolution is for um, new stop signs on Derby Avenue at North Lafayette. And again, there really wasn't any uh, reason to put new stop signs there. It didn't meet any of the warrants for a, a stop sign. And so we also recommend denying that request. Uh, the third item is for East Lincoln Avenue. We had a request to add a pedestrian crosswalk at Knowles um, and looked at that and kind of looked at the whole corridor as well from Main Street to Campbell. And at this time we're saying let's hold off on doing anything new because we're planning on doing this road in 2022. At that time I'm hoping to do some pedestrian islands um, and some safer crossings for pedestrians. Um, so at this time we're, we're recommending that we hold off on any major changes uh, with the exception of some additional signage at South Altadena. That's where we used to have a traffic signal and there's still crosswalk striping there, but no signs to tell anybody that there's a crosswalk there. So uh, we'd like to bring that up to code uh, for the next couple of years and then we'll do a really nice improvement when we actually get to Lincoln in 2022. Um, and then the final resolution also deals with Lincoln Avenue. Uh, this is for the bridge that's over I-75. Um, right now, it's basically two very large lanes um, in each direction, and we're recommending restriping that to be four lanes. So you'll have um, the two middle lanes would be a left turn lane in either direction, and then the two outside lanes would be through lanes. So this will keep cars from stacking um, through red light cycles, and it'll get traffic moving a little bit better. So this is something we would recommend DPS do now, <coughs> and then when the bridge gets replaced as part of the I-75 project, we would have the contractors restripe it that way as well. Um, so that's all I have, and I'll take any questions if there's anything. Any questions from Ms. Donahue? Commissioner Levasseur. When do you expect that bridge to be replaced? Uh, I just went to a meeting today. So uh, we, have the, we have three bridges, the Lincoln, 11 Mile, and Gardenia. 11 Mile, um, they're planning to start in 2021 um, in the summer, tearing that down. The rest of them, or the other two, uh, are 2022 or 2023. I'm not sure yet where they're going to slot those in. So we have a couple years, but it's coming. <laughs> Any other questions? Commissioner Macy. I guess I'm curious. I saw that there were two options for the restriping, and one just having that center lane that was either t direction turn. What tipped the balance between the two options? Um, so if you had two left turn lanes, you... <coughs> you could potentially stack more vehicles to turn left in both directions, whereas if you just had the one, you could have cars kind of competing for that lane. Um, the idea was you might have a little bit more of a buffer space doing that for pedestrians on the sidewalks. Um, and I think ultimately we figured there's, there's adequate room for pedestrians. It's still a safe sidewalk as it stands right now. So um, we opted to kind of have the benefit of safer traffic movement as well. Any motions? Commissioner Perush? I'll move approval of these recommendations. Motion by Commissioner Perush, second by Commissioner Dubuck. Discussion? All right, with none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Donahue. Thank you. All right, item 12 adoption of fiscal year 2020 and 2021 goals and objectives. Mr. Grizzell. Yes, good evening, Mayor and Commission. Um, so as we've discussed throughout the process this, um, this year, the plan has been to do more of an update to the current goals and objectives than to do a full reevaluation of all of them and, and, and really get into major changes due to, the, due to the transition that we're finding ourselves in as a city. Um, so with that, I'll kind of put out some of the highlights uh, that's within the document before you. Um, this year we're looking to create plans to address things like lead and copper service lines, 
uh, the funding of major road improvements. Um, there's also some personnel aspects in there, including really pursuing a new facilities manager position, a full-time appraiser in the assessor's office to try and get us um, into compliance with state regulations. Um, and then the only real added goal this year was a added goal, goal number eight for sustainability. Um, I sent all the goals and objectives around to staff and got their feedback before I sent them out um, to you guys to get your feedback and you have before you tonight what the, has been the product of all of this. Questions? <coughs> Comments? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, after uh, pondering and thinking about the results of our strategic planning session, um, I saw a, a gap in this plan that I would like to propose adding text to the language of the strategic plan. And it kind of stems from our discussion at our strategic planning session. One of the things we talked about was more effectively using neighborhood <coughs> associations. And really, our the, we have multiple committees, boards, task forces, um, uh, organizations that serve the city. And they are, in a way, our neighborhood organizations, our connection to the citizens. And they perform multiple roles. Sometimes it's regulatory. Sometimes it's advisory. Sometimes it's actually uh, implementing uh, tasks. And um, as I looked at the document, it occurred to me that, this, uh, that we might want to consider adding some uh, suggestions about how we manage those committees. Initially, I thought it would go under the communications objective, which is a, or, or goal rather, which is goal number three. But as I looked at it, or as number four, but as I looked at it, I think it fits better under goal number two, which is our operations goal to perform all city operations as efficiently and effectively as possible, because that's really what our committees do. They help our departments function more effectively. And so what I would say, what I'm proposing is a new objective four under that goal. The objective would be to use committees, boards, commissions, and task forces, and I just call those committees, to achieve the objectives of specific city departments and programs. And that is those that are not dictated by the state of Michigan, things like the planning commission or is under, operate under a state mandate. <clears throat> the action steps would be Evaluate all committees, review the ordinances creating them, their operating rules, programs of work, qualifications for membership, if any, and relationship to city departments. Evaluate departments' needs for citizen oversight, advice, decision making, and actual service, and present the results of the evaluation to the city commission. Action two would be to revise or create committees to match departments' needs and to determine and provide the resources they need to be effective. And action number three is consider establishing a position for a volunteer coordinator in the city. I will say that uh, in the preliminary work of the senior task force, the focus groups that we've been holding, the input we've been getting from seniors suggests that there is a role, uh, could be a valuable role to be played within the city, um, uh, coordinating uh, service activities and volunteer services. Um, we would want to see the outcome of our action step number uh, number one, but that might be something to consider down the road. So um, I would uh, move that we add this language to the goals and objectives. A motion by Commissioner Douglas. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Macy. All right. Now, to be clear, the motion is just to add it to the goals and objectives. It's not to approve all of them just yet. So Correct. we're going in a two-step phase mm -hmm. here. Um, discussion. Commissioner Macy. So I'm very interested in the volunteer coordinator, something I tried to get in the strategic plan last year. Um, I, and I think that the fact that the task force has brought that forward is something that could be useful to seniors. I think we would find it would be useful to all of the residents. Uh, we're looking at that as well on the Parks and Rec and Senior Advisory Board right now. We have created a subcommittee for volunteerism in the city basically to look at new opportunities. Um, so I think it would be great to have a volunteer coordinator to work among the various committees. I feel somewhat ambivalent about the first two actions. Um, I think it it's a, it's creates work for staff, probably the legal department, um, that they may not be particularly interested in doing. I don't know if I would say that it's a priority goal for, for me. Um, I do see some value in it, and I especially see some value in the way that we could use it to create more transparency about these committees and boards. 
Um, I think it would be great if we, if we had all this information out on each of these committees and boards on our website. Not that you can't dig to find all of this information, but if you go and look at Parks and Rec, it doesn't show the ordinance that creates it, what the operating rules are. It doesn't even always say who all the members of the committees are. Uh, and for some committees, particularly, this isn't a committee, but the DDA, it would be nice to know who's on that, who's on that um, board, do we call it, and what their affiliation is with the city. Um, just other, in other words, let people know who, who is all these and who the, whose ear they can bend if they have something they want to say about parks or about the downtown. Um, so that to me is an interesting piece of it, but I'm curious to hear what staff has to say about the additional work. Well, it definitely will be additional work. So, and yeah, just uh, glancing at it, I think yeah, you're correct. I think some of it will fall on the legal department, but uh, wait a couple of months, we'll have a full-time city attorney back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to get it done. So. Well, the one we have right now. <coughs> <laughs> we, all, we all have our crosses. It's today, like he's so. working part time. <laughs> so what's new? Oh, yeah. um, I, I'll just comment a little bit. You know, I know back in the day to be sort of the recent historian, I guess, on some of the moves that we've made in the past to consolidate some of the committees and things like that. Um, you know, this is definitely work. You know, Mr. Gillum's department, uh, I forget he's managing two, but the legal department, obviously he's wearing two hats right now, doing an excellent job. Um, you know, to his point, you know, as, as time goes on, maybe, um, you know, there's more time throughout the next fiscal year. Uh, but I also would like to acknowledge that we have, one of the true assets that we have in Royal Oak is our volunteer base. We have men and women that come out for, away from their families on, you know, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, where they could be watching their kid play soccer, or they could be taking care of an aging parent or whatever it may be, and they come and they help advise and make decisions and promote this community, and they're a tremendous asset and, and you know, probably the driving force to our success that we've had as a community. And I think to having some point to make sure that we're looking at, you know, they're here to serve, they want to serve, making sure we have clear direction and that you know they they're using their energy in the very best way because that's what they want to do and that's why they're serving that's why they're volunteering i don't think is a is a bad um uh way of going about things so if we take a little bit of time to recalibrate to ensure that you know, those people that are taking their time to to make our community better have a little bit more um uh, direction and um resources behind them is is uh you know a positive thing so in general I'm okay with it, but it comes down to if it becomes over-consuming, you know, priorities shift a little bit, but I think evaluating, looking at it, and, and you know, trying to calibrate every year is not a bad idea. Commissioner Pruch? Um, I don't know whether this would be added as a, as a separate action item or whether it could be incorporated in action item number one, but it seems to me that one of the primary problems with the current committee setup is that when people apply to the various committees, not all of them understand what the committees or whatever they are actually do. And to Commissioner Macy's point, there isn't adequate information on the website that can be easily accessed so that when you fill out the application, you can go to it quickly and say, okay, you know, based upon what these descriptions are, these are the three that I want to apply to because they have some fundamental understanding of what it does and what they're gonna be asked to do and not do. Um, a lot of applicants, just because they wanna serve, will give us a whole laundry list. Yeah. They'll give us 12 different boards that they want to apply to. And my guess is that most of them have really no understanding as to what those committees actually do and what their responsibilities would be. Uh, they may know how often they meet, but other than that, you know, they really don't know. It sounds good, the Environmental Advisory Board, that really sounds good to some people, but what do they really do? It's hard to determine that. And unless you go back into the minutes and the agendas and all of that kind of stuff, you really can't determine it. So I would like to, perhaps also enhance our application process in such a way so that you can easily access information about each of those committees, whether it's actually revising the application itself, saying, okay, if you want more information before you fill out the list, you know, go to this link where you can see the description of all the committees and have it all in one place instead of going from each department to department to department to see what committees work with them. Um, to me, that is the most critical, critical need right now because we're getting, my perception is that there is a fair amount of turnover in committees. And my sense is that in a lot of those cases, it's people who get on the committee and then didn't really understand what it was about and then decided, uh, 
I really don't want to be here because <laughs> I really didn't understand what it was all about. And I think if they had more information up ahead of time, um, they'd be more informed in terms of actually applying for the ones that they really would, would work well with. And perhaps we wouldn't have so much turnover. Maybe we still would, but I think it would help the whole turnover issue. Um, so to me, that is the more critical issue um, in terms of getting citizen involvement and more citizen information out there. A review it would be nice to be able to do, but it is staff intensive. It's not only the city attorney, it's each of those department heads that supervises all of those committees. Um, and to have it done over the long term, yeah, I think that's that would be nice to do. But to me, the more important thing right now is, is improving our communication with potential applicants about all of the various committees so that they know what they're applying for. And Commissioner Proust, just to add to that, it's an excellent point. Not just the applicants that are applying to know what they're getting into, but maybe in a way kind of casting a bigger net because when people see, oh, wait a minute, I might be really interested in this, now you get, you know, people that might apply for something, you know, so we'll have more applicants for more areas, you know, as a byproduct as well. Commissioner Macy. I guess I want to build on that and see what Commissioner Douglas thinks about the idea of for this year's strategic plan or strategic plan kind of update, um, adding something about putting together all the information that we have on these various committees and boards in, in the website on each page and then also doing an update to the application, uh, which I think if we then in the future wanted to an evaluation and review of all of them, it might lend itself to that by having all the information together in one place. I've been sitting here kind of listening to Commissioner Prusch's good idea and crafting an action item that just says, make it easier for people to understand opportunities and apply. By getting um, more information. Well, that's the, uh, um, by, I, that, by what would you add to it? By, um, by um, updating the city website, in such a way that applicants can easily find descriptions of each board and commission. Among other things. Well, yeah, I would say I, I, um, that making it easier for people to understand opportunities does embrace the need for better communication through the website or you know, paper communications or the application process. Do we need to go into further detail? Or do we trust staff to take that and run with it? Um, I would prefer to, to have a little bit more detail about, because the, because I think, the, I think the, the best portal for information is the website. Certainly you can expand that to making sure that there is a squib in insight saying if you want more information about the boards and committees, this is where you go. Um, but it seems to me the primary source of information for most of our applicants is the website. <coughs> so I guess I would like to see some language about improving the website so that people can get adequate information about them through our website. Or, yeah, or maybe we say the opportunities comma with a focus on, you know, the city website as a medium of outreach or information, something like that. Like maybe put a focus on the website. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I hate to wordsmith here, but that's, that's my intent would be to, to, to focus on, on getting more information about each specific board and commission out there. With a focus on better organizing and utilizing the city's website? Yes. I, I would just uh, say, you know, through the city's website, um, through the city's website and other tools. And I'm gonna, if I'm, I'm gonna uh, refer to the city clerk right now because she and I were corresponding recently about the application process. Um, and she, they, they need to update their database, find a new database. Um, and I think once they did that, that would make it easier for people to fill out application forms and for the staff to, um, uh, to analyze those to match people, or for us to match the right people with the right jobs. So if I was going to add anything, it would be, you know, to, through the website and the um, application process. Okay. That makes sense. Now, is this a additional, because we have a motion on the table 
for the presented document. Is this addition to it or in replacement of action one, or how are we going about that? So I would move to amend my original <coughs> motion to add action item four um, to make it easier for people to understand um, opportunities and apply through the website and uh, an improved application process. Saying no's. Commissioner Macy. Right, can I speak without seconding? <laughs> Um, well, there's a, there's a motion. Let's see if anyone seconds I'll it. I'll second, just okay, so that we can keep talking. Bruch. Okay. Amen. So it go, goes back to what I was saying is that now we're placing another large piece of work on staff's plate, and I, I was thinking that we were instead, instead of doing the evaluation and review this year, we would be doing this, putting the information together this year. I mean, this is just a one-year strategic plan, and now it's getting to be quite lengthy task that we're suddenly adding. So I think I would rather, instead of adding it as action four, replace... Um, actions one and two, I think. Like, have that be the new action one and have the volunteer coordinator be action two. I'd like to keep, I mean, we may not get to the full evaluation <coughs> that is proposed here, but I don't want it to disappear. Um, if, I mean, if staff could take some limited steps towards achieving this, I mean, and I know for a fact, the animal shelter committee that I serve on is in a process of transition and, and trying to better understand what their role is. So I, there may be an incremental approach to this. Yeah, I, I have a suggestion maybe with the language and semantics and, and giving our, I mean, I think we have a pretty competent staff. I think they understand, you know, in general what we want. Um, but do we burden them by saying evaluate all committees? That's pretty absolute. Like you have to get through all committees. Maybe we say commence the evaluation of all committees mm -hmm. so they can at least begin it this year. And if they get to five, they get them all done, great. If it's easier than they think, perfect. If it's harder than they think, they can prioritize the ones that you know probably need the most um, support. Um, that would be my suggestion. But what I think we could do is we could um, vote on the motion, the amendment right now, add it to the list, and then I think we could amend in the second one, action one, uh, to, and maybe action two to commence, to use the word commence, the process. And then, um, and then we approve the whole thing. I know that sounds complicated, but we'll get through it. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so the amendment, uh, I almost called you Commissioner Hallis, City Clerk Hallis. <laughs> um, I did speak with Commissioner Douglas prior to this, but our database has crashed. Oh. So we know we have to get a new something with boards and committees, but I'm trying to get through the March election, and but it's on it's on the back burner. I have to get something to replace this with because what we have now it's the access database. Can't use it yeah. So it is on there, and I actually do have money set aside. Well, I'm going to be asking for additional money for my budget to get a whole new program for the, in May for boards and committees. Okay. So it's it's coming. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll vote on the amendment, which is to... Do you want me to read it? Yeah, because I have a lot of scratches here. <laughs> I'm not sure make if it, I scratched make everything out. Make it easier out, for people to understand opportuni volunteer opportunities and apply okay. through the website and an improved application process. Improved application process. Okay. Just a point of order. We, we have two motions on the table right now. We're amending the first motion. Is that... Yep. Okay. And then once we get that one done, then um, I assume we're going to get another amendment to talk about commencing versus getting everything done, at least starting the process, but not, you know, giving the mandate to complete it. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So now we have four actions, and um, there's probably another amendment coming. Mr. Macy? Um begin evaluating. I'm, yeah, I move that we change action one to begin evaluating and drop the word all in committees. And then for action two, what about consider revising or creating committees or propose? I mean, revise or create committees also sounds like or a Or evaluate ask. the revision or creation of committees. How about evaluate how committees match department needs? Yeah. Well, oh, but you may yet want to revise or probably not create, but revise committees. Okay, so then whatever. And potentially I'd... revise. <laughs> Step 
definitely a good use of our time. Sorry. If you just said... Wait, waiting for your... Uh, oh, oh, um, and then... I think that's all I got. Okay, so you only want to amend action one, or what do you want to say for action two? I didn't get that clarity. Uh, we're doing that together. Um, so for action two, evaluate how committees match department needs and whether they provide the resources needed to be effective. <coughs> Did you get that? Mm -hmm. um, consider revising or creating committees as a, as a result of that evaluation. Or make recommendations. Make recommendations. Shara's looking at me. I'm just, I wasn't taking, I figured you were writing it down, not me, so I wasn't oh, no, Mike's wording writing, thing. Mike's writing it down. Kind of. Make recommendations. I didn't get the last part. Revising or? On revising or creating committees. Creating committees. So I have begin evaluation. Begin evaluation. Uh, begin evaluating committees for action number one. Okay. And then for um, action number two. Um, Evaluate if committees match department needs. How committees match? How do committees match department. match department needs? Determine and provide the resources they need to be effective. And then um, consider um, revising or creating committees. That's what I have here in my notes to meet needs. Okay, that is what I said. But now I'm thinking instead of making them revise or create committees, consider doing that, making, instead of putting that on staff, why don't we just have the same as action one, present the result, results of the evaluation to the city commission. And then we can think about revising or creating after that. No? I think we got action one. How about you restate action okay, two? No, clean fine. slate. I love it. Since your amendment. No, no, it's, I, what you said is perfect. <laughs> okay. This is getting right. crazy. It's good enough. I don't know what I said. I'm a terrible scribe. Um, so the first one is begin evaluating uh, committees, okay? And then you go down, <coughs> and then it says um, for action number two, um, uh, evaluate committees to... How committees? How committees match department... That's how right there. I can't... I put it in there. There's not enough space. How committees match department needs. Determine and provide the resources they need to be effective. Consider revising and creating committees to meet department needs. If I may make a suggestion for that last sentence, writing as we go, make the last sentence, advise city commission on any need to revise or create committees. There you go. Yeah. Good? Okay. Yep. Okay, we're going to have to watch the film on this one, Ms. Hallis. Ms. Hallis. <laughs> All right. I'll call for the vote on the amendment. I don't think I got a second. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, Pat, or I'm sorry, Commissioner Pruish seconded it. Did I? Yeah, for I discussion. I will now eat. The Melanie said you didn't, but okay. Okay. Oh, didn't? No. I will now. We made the vote. Okay, we have a second. <laughs> okay, so now we're good? Not this is what happens when we get an amendment bill. <laughs> a lot of amendments. Mike, Mike can see the future. <laughs> I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're good. Motion's on the table. Any questions, debate, discussion, dialogue on this amendment? <coughs> All right, with none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion passes. No, that's the amendment. So that's now, the amendment. yeah, the, the amendment to the motion, the moved amendment passes. So now we have the original motion, which has been amended twice to add the fourth action as well as the combined edits of three members of this body into action one and two with crystal clarity. <laughs> Commissioner Lavasser. I, I'm just saying after all these amendments, it would be a shame if we don't pass this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a recess if that happens. <laughs> Maybe for a few hours. All right, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, we got through that <laughs> painlessly. You. Motion passes. But no, Thank but you, now Commissioner. we got to do the whole overall thing, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, so now it's been added, okay? So now we have all the goals that we talked about plus the revised goal. Here is goal number four, I think, if I remember correctly. 
um, with all the amendments in it baked in. Um, any questions on that? Any motions on that? We have Commissioner Dubuck. I'm sorry, after all that, and this is kind of nitpicky oh, no. and no, stupid. No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's okay. So in, in goal six, to preserve Royal Oaks finances through sound fiscal policy, strategic planning, prompt decisive actions, and efficient, efficient management of taxpayers' assets. Um, just the verbiage <coughs> is just hitting my ears the wrong way, because unless some one of the many lawyers here tells me, I think the assets of the city actually belong to the residents of the city, not necessarily taxpayers in an, an exclusive class. So I'm just wondering if it would better read effective management of public assets or community assets. Would you like to assets. make an amendment? What's that? Would you like to make an amendment? So I think the most accurate would be public assets. I'm looking at the city attorney to see if either of those words makes more sense. I know this isn't necessarily a legal document, but taxpayers' assets rings to my ears like the things that I own. I'm a taxpayer and I have assets. And the IRS, when they hear taxpayer assets, they have a specific meaning for that, right? Taxpayers' assets to me. And we also have residents that don't necessarily pay property taxes, but the yeah, taxpayer asset could be a deferred to, loss on so, your taxes. So I, I would move to set, have just revise that to read management of public assets. Motion by Commissioner Dubuck, second by Commissioner Macy. Discussion? I think it makes sense grammatically. Um, defines it a little bit better. Because when I hear taxpayer asset, I think about, or tax asset, like a deferred loss that is you put on your right. equity line, on it your financial like statement asset. to say, look at this asset I got. I can, I can take this loss for four or five more years, you know, when you're a big company. So that makes a little bit more sense definitionally. Good catch. All right, I'll call for the vote on the amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, motion passes. Thanks. By the way, you never want to have a loss me. in the first place, but if you do, you can, you know, it can be considered an asset. All right. Um, the, uh, I guess that brings us to, uh, back to the potential original motion. Any other periods, apostrophes, ands, a's we want to make changes to, or any other language? Any motions? Mr. Bruch? I'll move approval of this stuff. <laughs> and all the stuff and the stuff? All of, the, all, all of our goals and objectives. I'll second that motion. Perfect. Uh, which includes all of these changes. Y yes, amendments. absolutely. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Bruch. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Macy. All right, discussion. All right, with that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Ooh. All right. City Clerk Hallis, good luck on that one. I could, I could be a late night for her. <laughs> All right, so this brings us to item 13, which is the city manager executive search approval of candidates for second interviews. Um, we had our interviews uh, for five candidates on Saturday. Uh, the commission decided a couple days ago that, you know, we would wait for the meeting to be posted online, which uh, WROK, with the help of Richard, got that up and going. And, um, you know, we said, well, tonight we would, you know, make that decision as far as who the finalists are. And so, Mr. Gillum? I don't know that I have much to add. Uh, you conducted a series of five interviews. Um, you can uh, invite all five of the candidates back. Um, you can invite less than five. Uh, <clears throat> I remind you that uh, um, <clears throat> Mr. Vitrano, our consultant from GovHR, recommended that, um, well, again, it's your decision. Ultimately, his recommendation was for the second round that we invite back at least three of the five candidates. So, Commissioner Perush. Um Before we get into a discussion of the specific candidates or what we're going to do with this, um, I need to let the public know that I have a former conflict of interest with one of the candidates, um, and I'll describe it really briefly. The City Commission already knows this, um, but the public needs to know this, too. Um, uh, Cheryl Mitchell, Mitchell, who is one of the candidates, uh, is a past member of the West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission. That commission is a publicly elected commission, unlike the Parks and Recreation Commission here in Royal Oak. It's actually elected by the voters. There's about a dozen of them in the state of Michigan. West Bloomfield has one. And she was a member of that commission from 2003 to 2016. And there was a period of time of four to six years in that period when she was actually the chair of the commission. Uh, they meet once a month, uh, and they are responsible for the whole parks and recreation budget for the township of West Bloomfield. 
Um, about 2005, 2006, uh, the commission, because they were involved in a lot of um, property acquisition, including the railroad trail through part of the community, uh, really wanted to have its own legal representation. Up until that time, they had relied on township attorneys to represent them in their, in their issues. Um, but there were enough issues that they realized that they wanted um, their own representation. And there were some issues where they were potentially going to be in conflict with the township. And so they thought that having their own legal representation made sense. Anyway, uh, they went out and searched for a legal firm to represent them. And our, the f legal firm that I belonged to at the time was hired by the Parks and Recreation Commission. Uh, and we represented them uh, up until the time that I retired from the law firm, which was 2017. We, as attorneys, rarely interacted with the commission. We rarely went to the actual commission meetings. We dealt almost exclusively with staff, their executive director and some of their other staff members. Um, but this commission did approve our contract on an annual basis, and, uh, and that was our law firm. I retired in 2017. Uh, that's when they stopped representing uh, the commission. They moved on and, and found another law firm. Um, and Cheryl Mitchell, as a member of that commission, left um, in 2016, um, so was not involved um, for the whole period of time that I was with the law firm. Um, she has moved on. I have moved on. <laughs> there is no current conflict, um, but everybody needs to know that that's there, just for the record. Briefly speaking. Yes. Great. And I and we've also covered this with City Attorney uh, Mr. Gillum that there is no conflict <coughs> of interest present uh, at the moment or anything to be concerned about. Correct? It's absolutely correct. And what uh, Commissioner Perush has indicated to me is that the relationship the, that she had with the uh, West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation Commission before and or uh, Dr. Mitchell would not in any way interfere or affect her ability to make any decisions on the issue that's in front of the commission tonight. So. All right. All right. Commissioner Dubuck. Sure. So I thought uh, Saturday was really informative. Um, I think we really landed on a strong pool of candidates. <laughs> And uh, they all bring, uh, I think, the skill sets um, that you know would, would make them all, you know, I think, fine managers of the city. But for, for me, a couple rise to the top um, that that I'll will just put out there uh, for discussion. Um, and th there's actually two, and I think three is probably the right target. So I'm happy to have conversations about who the folks top three are. But I would be very interested in uh, continuing conversations with, um, and this is with no disrespect to those that I don't name. I think they all interviewed very well and have fine uh, resumes and, and proven backgrounds. But I'm very interested in continuing conversation with uh, Eric Tungate and uh, Cheryl Mitchell. Mr. Macy? Um, so I agree with what was just said, that it was, it was very informative, and I was pleased with the quality of applicants we had. Quick, pleased with GovHR for the job they've done in putting this this pool together for us. I thought they all interviewed very well. Um, I also had two um, two that rose to the top for me, and they were the same two that, that you mentioned. Uh, when I was looking, I felt like all of the candidates did a very nice job of talking about their experience, about their qualifications. It was clear that they were all quite qualified. Um, <coughs> I think they gave good examples and talked about how their, what their fiscal policy would look like. I think there was a lot of similarities in that regard. I was particularly interested when I was watching the candidates at looking how I felt like they were going to relate to, to people, uh, both to the staff that they would be managing, to the residents that they would be leading, and to the city commission that they'd be working with. Um, and those two candidates were the ones who I felt gave a lot of good examples and seemed to, be, seemed to have a, a real knack for that kind of people work, which I think is really important in leading the city. Um, and I also was looking for people who uh, have good ideas and are bringing energy into this, into this role, like excitement for this job, excitement for Royal Oak, um, and have shown an ability to deal with some, some thorny issues in the, in, their, in the work that they've done before. And I thought both of those also gave good examples of that. Um, so for me, they, they were exceptional, and I, I hope that we can bring them back. And I agree with you as well. I know that the Gov HR, um, James spoke about perhaps bringing three back. For me, those two were the standouts, but I'm curious to hear what others have to say. Mr. Perush? Um, I also had those two people on my list. Um, if it were up to me, I would also bring back Paul Brake, 
um, who currently is the city manager down in uh, uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, but has indicated a strong interest in coming back to Michigan because he has Michigan roots here. Um, I also think that all five of the candidates are were really are really re very talented talented people, and we could, probably couldn't go wrong with any one of the five. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, these three stood out for a, a couple of reasons. First of all, all three of them said that they are going to be committing to Royal Oak for as long as, as we'll have them. Um, it's not like this is a stepping stone for them. They're committing to four years, but then they might move on to something else, which unfortunately is the pattern in a lot of city manager hires these days. Um, but all, all three of them s seem to say, you know, we're, we're here for the long term. As long as you have us, we'll, we're going to stay because we think this is a great opportunity. And we love the community and we want to serve the community. Um, the other thing that I noticed about all of them is, is something that Commissioner Macy mentioned and that they all seem to have really good rapport, uh, not only with staff, but also with community groups, with community organizations, with neighborhood groups. And I think that that's, that's a real, that's a, that's a strength that we really need to build on in this community. Um, we because we have great neighborhoods. We have good community groups. We have wonderful residents and uh, Being accessible having an open-door policy and showing up in the community and being out there and, and just being out in the community I think is going to be very very important um, They all stress the importance of communication not only with internally within the staff But also with the community in a variety of different ways all, all three of them stress that uh, they all stress the importance of, of neighborhood strength and building on good neighborhood values and so on in the community. Um, and all of them, all three of them also have very strong fiscal management skills, which I think is critical. Uh, we've all been riding this this good economy for a while, but um, I don't know, there's some ominous signs out there and I think, you know, there's and there's always the potential of things that don't, we really can't predict. Um, and having people in hand with really strong financial backgrounds I think is really, really, really important. And I think all three of these people demonstrated that. So um, I agree with uh, Mr. Tungate and Ms. Mitchell, but I will also add uh, Paul Brick to that list. Commissioner Gibbs? For just about the same exact reasons, I had the same three choices at the top of my list as Commissioner Perush did. So I will just Keep it short and sweet and say, I echo her comments. Okay. Anybody else? Commissioner Lavasser? Uh, I, I had um, a couple of the same ones that, that rose high on my list. Uh, and, and I, I mean, when, when you're looking at the applicants, you're looking at the whole picture. How are they going to interact with staff? How are they going to be good leaders? Uh, how are they going to interact with the public? Uh, but one thing that uh, I specifically looked out for was uh, how they would handle finances. Do I think that they could get the most out of what we have? And, and there's a couple that I thought specifically addressed those, those concerns or, or that uh, priority. Uh, Mr. Tungate would be one, uh, Ms. Mitchell as well, uh, Dr. Mitchell, my, my apologies. Uh, and, and one that we haven't mentioned today, but uh, uh, Jane... Uh, DeSessa was was the third one. And those are the three that rose to the top for me. Commissioner Douglas? Uh, yeah, I, the, and this is, you know, when you're, a, when you're a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. My background's in public relations. And uh, the a quality that was important to me among these candidates was their ability to manage media relations and to be a spokesperson for the city and to understand when they should be the spokesperson for the city and when, you know, elected officials or staff should be the spokespeople. Um, and I will say that Mr. Brake spoke of his city having a media policy. Um, if we don't in, wind up interviewing or hiring him, I would still say let's take that to heart because I thought that was a good idea. Um, and so I, I thought that for that reason, he and um, uh, Dr. Mitchell and uh, Mr. Tungate, to me, were the ones that if they were up you know, in front of the camera doing a media interview, were the people that I thought would represent us well. So I guess I'm going to fall in with Commissioners uh, Gibbs and Perouche. And perhaps I'll just make that as a motion, that we bring back for interviews um, Paul Brake, Eric Tungate, and Cheryl Mitchell. So a motion by Commissioner Douglas, second by Commissioner Dubuck. Discussion? 
Mr. Dillon. Not as to the merits, but uh, just uh, let me go ahead and lay out um, at this point in time why the recommendation from uh, James Vetrano was we bring back three as opposed to bringing back two. Uh, because in the, the conversations that uh, Mr. Vandelar and I had with him before the interviews even started on, on uh, Saturday, that was a question that had come up. And um, to be perfectly honest, um, <clears throat> my initial discussion with him was, well, it seems to me that the commission's goal should be to narrow the list to two finalists at that point in time. And he smiled as if it's probably a situation that he's been through before, but he said, that sounds good, but think about it for a second. What happens? I mean, we're at a point now where the applications are all public. You would like to think that everybody that has gone this far in the process will follow the process all the way through. But he said there are reasons that people still withdraw from the process going forward, um, whether it's personal reasons or maybe their current employer gets wind of the fact that they're looking for something else and they sweeten the deal and they end up staying where they are, whatever it is. He said if you only are bringing two candidates forward and if for any reason one of them drops, then you're only left with one and you really have no option at that point in time. So again, it's your decision as to how many to bring back. His recommendation was for three and that's the basis for his recommendation. I just wanted to, to lay that out for you in a little bit more detail. Why didn't so. you say that before? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Macy? So pr probably too late with this since it seems the math is now stacked up against me, but if I had had to choose a third can candidate, I also would have chose uh, Ms. DeSessa. So that would have been the motion that I would have made if we had come down to this end of the table to make that motion. Um, just so the mayor knows since he hasn't spoken, on, spoken his mind about this yet. But I also feel, even having heard that explanation, which I think I had also heard Mr. V Mr. Vitrano tell to us as well about the three candidates I mean, I know he's done it a million times, and this is only my first, all of our first times doing this hiring of a city manager, but it sure seemed to me like these candidates were pretty excited to come here, and I guess I'd be surprised um, if we were to lose one in the next couple weeks. So I almost am reluctant to bring three back when we all have said the same consistent two. So. Well. I'll just add, I think, you know, when it comes to terms of three, um, I mean, we had resumes we looked at, right? And we had a professional in our HR um, manager help us narrow it down to a, a, a more manageable focus. From there, we ended up getting five or six. We had five interviews. And, um, you know, I agree. I think everybody has a strong resume. And no matter what, if we had to pick one out of the hat, uh, the city would be in good shape moving forward. That's That, to me, I believe to be true. I think the um, challenge that you have is when you have a public interview like this, um, you know, we gave about 30 to 45 minutes per candidate. Um, I think it's going to be much more interesting when you narrow the field down to three. And I think, um, you know, yeah, there are, there are some, you know, for some people that feel like rise to the top and, and that's great. But I think when we're going to, I think what we looked for in this first opportunity is what did the candidates volunteer? What did they opt in at? What did they say? And now we'll have a chance to spend a little bit more time with them and really drill down some of those questions and come up with some questions that are really germane to what, what they're doing. Um, and I think that, you know, any one of those candidates can, you know, within individually or collectively move their position, right? Just because you're going to have that second opportunity to get much deeper. I think for me, I think the, the, the folks that have been moved on the, the table, um, I, I'm also in, a, in agreement with, um, I think that um, they bring... Uh, relevant uh, experience that, you know, they can hit the ground running in Royal Oak with a lot of the contemporary and historical issues we've dealt with as a community, but they also had a set of new ideas that they were able to articulate and, and things that may not be missing or gaps, but certainly something that, you know, we aren't doing today and that seem like they're, they're good things, whether it relates to, you know, the culture that we have in the building, how we communicate with the media and the press, and so, to me, these candidates, um, based on their backgrounds, really had that good blend of hit the ground running, but also bring something new to the table uh, that, that we haven't had, um, just because, you know, every city goes through change, and, and, and I think that some of these new ideas might be relevant to us in our journey where we're at on it today. So, um, I'll be supporting the motion. Uh, I have to apologize. We kept calling Dr. Mitchell, Ms. Mitchell, because she was, uh, you know, closer. Yes. Uh, uh, the last, uh, was she the last interview? Yeah. 
I think we were on Mr. and Ms. all day, and I think mm -hmm. it just, you know, because we discussed your PhD credentials and everything uh, when we were looking at the, um, you know, well, or it's clearly in the in the guide, and, and I know her as Dr. Mitchell. Uh, you know, for those of you who operate in Southeast Oakland County, Dr. Mitchell is a well-known commodity. So, um, yeah, so apologies there. And so, um, yeah, uh, I'll be supporting it uh, for those reasons, the motion on the table, and eager to... Um, see where this goes, and, and also a great appreciation, if this passes, for the two candidates that, um, you know, aren't moving forward to the final, I mean, we're talking about splicing hairs here, and, um, you know, like I said, I truly believe if we drew a name out of the hat, we'd still be in really great shape no matter what, so. Um, any other discussion? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, now the next interviews are going to be March 12th. Yeah, if I could just weigh in, yeah, yeah. Um, just to make sure that everybody is on the same page, because we do not have another regularly scheduled City com Commission meeting before the second round of interviews. Because now we have three weeks until our next City Commission meeting, because our, our first regular meeting in March is being pushed back a week because of the presidential primary election uh, on the 10th. Yeah. So instead of meeting on the 9th, we'll be meeting on the 16th. The second round of interviews are scheduled for the 12th. And I'll follow up with uh, Mr. Petrano tomorrow, but the discussion that he and and, uh, and Mr. Vandelar and I have had, what we're anticipating at this point in time, we'll be having the candidates come in um, in the afternoon. Um, we'll have a period of time. Um, we're we're going to see if we can get the room over at the library, but we're not sure where, in an informal setting, any city employees that are interested department heads or staff, whoever has the time and the interest, will be able to go over and meet any or all of the three of them. Um, and then as before, um, James will have comment cards that, uh, that the staff can leave with him, and he'll collect that information. Then um, <clears throat> after, I don't know, maybe an hour or two of that, then we'll give the candidates a chance to have a break, go out and get a bite to eat somewhere then we're anticipating starting at roughly maybe 5.30 or so, an opportunity for any of the uh, cities, the members of the boards and committees or the members of the public to come in and again meet in an informal setting with any or all of the three, the same thing, have comment cards that James can collect and then get back to the city commission. Um, all leading up to the actual interviews themselves, which we would anticipate will start at 7 o'clock here in the commission chambers. Um, we did have a zoning board meeting, a regularly scheduled zoning board meeting scheduled that particular night in this room, but um, for once uh, the stars were in our favor. They didn't have enough business for this month, so the zoning board meeting was canceled. So we didn't have to find an alternate location for them or for us. So we'll be able to do the interviews right here in, in this room. And then um, again, that's on the 12th, and then based upon the discussion that we had on Saturday, and the way that you approach the, 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 the cuts, if you will, for tonight, it sounds like the City Commission is probably going to want to have a little bit of time to digest the interviews on the 12th. So, I mean, if you're prepared that night to make a decision and if you can want to direct uh, uh, Mr. Vitrano and I as to who you want us to make a conditional offer of employment to, we can do that at that time. But again, what I'm anticipating is you're probably going to want some time so we'll have an item on the commission agenda for March 16th for the following Monday for you to provide that direction to us if you're going to be ready to at that time. If you find that you need more time, you can take more time. But um, again, that uh, we don't have to have a decision made on the 12th. We'll, we'll take that next step when the commission is ready for us to take that step. Commissioner Douglas. Yes, I'm especially interested in feedback from the staff, uh, especially since two of our candidates are from Southeast Michigan. Uh, the the you know, staff managers, department heads may know, you know peers in those communities. And um, I mean, I, we've talked about the fact that because we are a, a fully staffed city with department heads, the job of the city manager is going to be managing people to a large extent. And I'm very keenly interested in feedback from our employees on that. Commissioner Macy. So I know this last time at the interviews, we delayed the um, televising of the interviews so that the other candidates wouldn't be able to watch each other. 
I wonder if now when they're doing all day with the city and they'll be here, do we still need to do that or could we could we do it live? Um, my thought is to still go ahead and delay it, but I mean, I guess that's not written in stone. I can talk to, to James more about that or if you have hard feelings about that. I mean, we'll still be recording right. the interviews. And, I mean, if, even if you're not likely to make a decision that night, there'll still be time for the interviews to be posted and for the public to see those. And yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not a huge deal. I just wondered if yeah. it was slightly different circumstances, if maybe we could do it live. I mean, despite my skepticism about anyone being able to watch it and give feedback in 24 hours, I did get a lot of feedback <laughs> from residents over the past couple of days, people who had watched some of the interviews. So I just thought giving them as much opportunity as possible would be nice. But I don't know. No one else, if everyone else thinks we should just keep delay, that's fine. Well, I'm hoping it'll be a much shorter time frame, so the requirements to download it, yeah. and maybe it won't need to be as edited as much because there's not as many breaks or anything. You're just yeah. boom, boom, boom. Hopefully it will get out that night. I mean, we can yeah. ask Richard to be sure, but I think yeah, that's a... pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. If not that night, I would think probably pretty early on Friday morning. Yeah, so. for sure. So anyway, that's kind of the game plan going forward at this point, so. All right, and then moving forward, just to maybe, you know, since it's a, um, if we vote and, and uh, pick a candidate to make a conditional offer to, will those discussions, you know, if there's a little bit of back and forth about how to make a arrangement between both parties work, is that something that will take place in closed session, or is that something that will take place with your office, how do you get direction? Can you kind of explain that maybe just a little bit ahead of time so people are prepared? Um, <clears throat> well, the decision as to who to make the offer to, that obviously has to be made in public. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, but once that's made, then, you know, if, if it's a matter of salary, relocation, or, you know, small little things that you go back and forth on, is that something you take the, the lead on and present an offer, or if we have to make a decision because there's something unique that might work for everybody, um, is that something that's done in closed session, or is that something that's done at the table? I would expect that uh, those kind of negotiations, like any other ones, I mean, I'll take the point on that as a city attorney, uh, with the assistance of Mr. Vitrano, I would assume, and then any uh, issues that we have to resolve, uh, those will be discussed initially in closed session. Okay as attorney-client privileged materials. Because it would be inherently unfair for us to explain our strategy <laughs> publicly yeah. and the other side not it's, to. It's, it's like with our collective yeah. bargaining, we can't negotiate collective bargaining contracts in public. It right. just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work so, that way. It's, but it's, then ultimately, the, the terms of any contract that you're going to approve with the successful right. candidate will have to be done publicly. And would be posted enough for people to take a look at. And the community will have a chance comment. to weigh in on those. And if we need to calibrate something, we can. But okay, I just want to make sure everyone knows that there's a process of 100% transparency, but there might be a little stage in between closed session if we're finalizing a few details behind the scenes, which makes absolute sense because we do it with collective bargaining and, and other deals because it's inherently unfair for one party to be public and the other party to be private. It just kind of takes away. It's not a negotiation at that point. That's Yeah, you Absolutely correct. Okay. All right. Uh, Commissioner Macy. Move to adjourn. We have a motion by Commissioner Macy to adjourn. Second by Commissioner Douglas. Is there any lengthy discussion on this item? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we used to have such great adjournment motions. What happened? All right. I'll, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Adjourned.